So, now we're up to session 10. And I welcome back Jorge Benitez, who's a founder and director of Enzyme APD. Uh, the work that he has been doing um, has been obviously really well published over the last few years uh, from Graphisoft. Uh, for those that have attended um, the Tapier launch that we did in July last year uh, and even seeing the presentation uh, that, that Jorge did um, in 2020 and 2021, um, you'd see that for a small practice based out of Hong Kong, uh, they are doing some amazing stuff in terms of trying to automate the way in which they work. And I think that it's this level of thinking that I think that all users from across the world really need to start thinking about in terms of how can we start to get more out of our software? What are the challenges that we are facing uh, in delivering our projects? What are the things that we are not having fun doing? How can we reduce risk? How can we, you know, what's a challenge? And then we can talk to people that are specifically capable of creating GDL or creating APIs to enable these automations to occur, to enable better deliverables and better outcomes. So in this session, I think you'll see some of the, the stuff that uh, Enzyme have been working on. So take it away, Jorge. Hi, Nathan. Thank you so much for your kind introduction and thank you for having us here today. I'm super excited to share with you and with uh, with all the public um, all the innovations that we have brought into, into our Archicad workflows. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jorge Benaitez. I'm a Spanish architect. I live in Hong Kong and I'm one of the co-founders of Enzyme APD. We focused on architectural design, urban design and digital consulting. So as designers, we try to combine board design proposals with very strong technical background, making our projects not only beautiful, but also feasible. Um, we have a research and innovation group, uh, a small team within the, within the, the team that basically its job is, is exploring new workflows and techniques of existing technology or new technologies and trying to find the best way to implement it into our BIM uh, workflows based on Archicad. So effectively creating this uh, computational design BIM workflow that we use for ourselves that we offer as well to our partners and, and and our clients um, the possibility also to to use some of these workflows and help them implement it as well and then uh, showing our commitment to to our industry we basically act as speakers and trying to promote in lectures conferences or and, and events around the globe uh trying to inspire other other colleagues other companies to follow the same path uh, because at the end of the day we can only be as fast as the slow of our of our group of our industry in this case so so we try to help uh, improve the, the industry um, in the widest sense uh, as much as we can so bringing back a little bit the topic of today we we focused on beam and digital design and uh, that are changing the very uh, way of how architects and and, and clients interact and how architects design their work. Uh, the, all these tools are making the design process much more flexible and, and participative as well for, for the clients and for, and for the designers, basically automating uh, most of the boring tasks or most of the time consuming tasks and, and basically leaving space for us to, to spend more time uh, talking to the client or, or bringing new ideas, researching, designing, etc. Um, so in this basically computational beam workflow that we are talking about, uh, we had our, our digital journey, as I like to, to say, uh, so we basically started, you know, in our early days after, well, before, before, uh, finishing university, but in our professional life, um, we started using Archicad because, um, it was a way to basically have a 3d model rendering documentation, all coordinated and and all the renderings and documentation practically automatic coming from our models. So it was a much better solution than any other, uh, any other tool. Uh, but we didn't really understand the full BIM uh, concept. So slowly we, we enter as, as the time went by, we enter into a uh, more BIM, BIM understanding of, of our, of our models. Um, but then slowly 
we started implementing other tools. So, for example, uh, in the early days, we started looking into Grasshopper for geometry exploration and, and then automating documentation sets as well, basically bringing data and bringing uh, different things from Rhino and Grasshopper into ArchiCAD to, to help even automating even more the, the documentation that ArchiCAD was producing. And then we entered the um, the next phase of, of our digital journey was using uh, ArchiCAD together with Grasshopper uh, for analysis and optimization. So sustainability or, or basically um, all sorts of optimization, material optimization, or, or I don't know, uh, structural optimization, things like this. So bringing different um, optimization tools, like I mentioned Wallace in, in, in the previous slide. And then we started looking into data in a, in a more wide uh, range. So integrating uh, tools like Python, Airtable, and, their, and different APIs, so Archicad API and Airtable API, for example, to start looking into how data is um, is managed is shared and so on so basically also we we realized that in the first part of our digital journey we were very focused as well into improving the or basically yeah improving the the, the work from our internal file users so to speak so internally in that within the team we will basically create tools that will help the team work together in within the archicad files or the rhino grasshopper files but then um very early we discovered uh, with our practice that that we needed to be able to integrate also external participants that may not have archicad they know they they might not be even architects or 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 being able to collaborate in in a file uh based work so we started looking as i said into data in different ways and, and that will help us to to integrate uh, through different add-ons and and tools that integrate external users to the ArchiCAD files. So everyone, uh, everyone is talking about uh, the use of all these new tools and, and processes, but uh, but most of us have been stuck with the uh, generally slow pace uh, of the development of these of these tools. They are, you know, very very complete tools. ArchiCAD is a very complex tool, and and its development uh, is. Uh, necessarily slower than we will expect. So um, at some point, we, uh, I guess, out of uh, frustration and out of also having a lot of ideas that we that it wouldn't really reach the the, uh, the bigger audience for you know to even uh, enter into the development pipeline. So we started looking into how could we customize our workflows and customize our ArchiCAD. Um, experience for our benefit and, and our clients. So I've been discussing in the past a lot of Grasshopper uh, integration, but now I want to basically focus a little bit more in, in, in the ArchiCAD side. So I want to show you a couple of examples of the use of Grasshopper, but with GDL uh, and other GDL objects and discuss like a couple of C++ add-ons that we've developed. And then I won't talk about it uh, here in this presentation, but but uh, we we will have a discussion uh, in some other session regarding the development of the JSON API uh, with the Tapir uh, open source project. So regarding the custom GDL libraries, uh, so Ensign has been uh, collaborating with a, a great designer and, and, and GDL developer called Greg Wilk uh, from Poland. Uh, we're now working together uh, on a daily basis, and and he's being uh, instrumental in the development of, of all these tools. Um, basically, um, we started looking at GDL because uh, at some point we realized that using Rhino Grasshopper and using Archicad, uh, basically we were uh, stuck with the tools that they were designed for us to 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 work together. So uh, in terms of the the, the, the live connection, uh, we could use only beams and and, uh, and columns and walls and doors and and whatnot. No, all the all the basic tools from Archicad. But but what happened if we wanted to basically create some kind of customized tools or customized elements that could help us bring uh, you know other data or different parameters in in certain way? So so we discovered GDL really allows us to expose any parameter that we want to. Add into the GDL 
to be manipulated by Grasshopper, which is great. Then these objects uh, can act as placeholders of data. So basically, it could be just like a simple sphere or a simple cube, but that can be uh, embedded with data coming from Grasshopper as well. Uh, it improves the performance by using this instance behavior that, that GDL objects have. And then GDL is really great, much better than uh, well, any other way that, that we know, at least, for to be able to have a, a very very deep graphic control on the 2D plans and sections. So, so mainly in the plans, the fact that you can create symbolic views of uh, also pro uh, programmed in GDL really speed up the, the process of documentation. As well as uh, we have also discovered that we are able to create attributes internally in GDL. So, base, basically, on you know, uh, looking at these uh, at, at these ideas, we started developing several libraries. Now we have an internal GitHub um, repository where we are uh, throwing um, uh, minimum viable products almost in a weekly basis. So, so every week we have some kind of new object or new idea that we try to uh, to develop and sometimes uh, we do it in a rush because a project needed it, or and sometimes we have a longer longer development time but but, but so far we have worked in, in several objects like the dynamic panel object and multi-segment or mono-segment structural profile and um, those are meant to be controlled by grasshopper and then we have a GDL objects that read external CSV database, a keynote object that I will show you, and an LCA label that we developed uh, together with Andy Thompson from, from uh, Thai uh, architecture in, in Ontario, in, in Barrie, Ontario. And then a number of other small uh, objects uh, or packages of objects that, are, that help us or have helped us in, in several projects. So the first one, the, the dynamic panel came up uh, basically working on, on a project, in, on a design project uh, in, in, uh, in Romania, in Bucharest. So we were designing this uh, small master plan that would include the design of a uh, football stadium. Um, so basically, we started looking into different Grasshopper scripts and Grasshopper um, uh, algorithms that help us to, to develop the a few concepts, a few proposals for the stadium, but we realized that most of our proposals included the basically the, the, the creation or the implementation of these uh, the, the, the team's colors and, and the team's flag into the design. So we were wondering how can we actually bring all these all these colors into um, into Archicad because the main problem is that Archicad uh, Life Connection works fine uh, in terms of attributes if you have pre-created attributes so or, or, so you basically will need to create all the different shaders or shades of color as a one as as different surfaces sorry and assign them manually in grasshopper if the color change you have to go and, and create again another 50 or 100 shades of red in this case um so it was not really really feasible so what we did is greg and i got together um, and and start designing this uh, this object. I did a first prototype uh, that actually contained, I think, five lines of of code. So something very very minimal, uh, defining a triangle with three points and a material, uh, and a surface material. And then Greg came in and and basically took the idea uh, further. Um, and here you can see how we are basically experimenting and and and, and checking in three D. So so very slowly we. Uh, we started adding different uh, functionalities like scheduling functionalities or, or subframe functionalities, um, things like this that, that will also help us automating the process of uh, detailing and, and documentation. And then we created a very slick uh, interface, I think, that help us control not only uh, all the parameters that Grasshopper can control. We can control them from Archicad too, but basically the, we're adding functionalities like the model view option control, which is super powerful. Uh, we're adding um, uh, scheduling options as well. Basically, the the object can be scheduled flat, uh, not with a three D rotation. Uh, basically, to create a, a schedule of panels in in real dimensions, adding automatic dimensions and IDs into the elements, and and then we can also have uh, some other extra controls from the interface in Archicad. 
Um, basically, just doing a quick um, summary of stuff. Uh, we have locked the number of of nodes. Uh, sorry, of of uh, of vertices in eight, but actually this is a, a hard coded limitation that can be changed. Uh, but basically, we can create panels up to eight nodes uh, in any uh, I mean any shape. It doesn't need to be regular shapes. It can be any shape. Uh, we can control the level of detail. We can control uh, a different set of offsets that that help us play with tolerances that are important also for later on for fabrication um, and manufacturing. We have four different surface definitions. So basically, based on building materials, override surface like it would happen in any standard ARCHICAD object. But then we can choose a, a manually defined RGB color. Uh, override, or we can have a, a graphic override controlled by Grasshopper, which is really great. And then, since the uh, uh, since the composites are not available uh, in GDL, we decided to create our own uh, composite uh, creator. So basically, both manually or you know, per object settings, uh, we have this basically this controller here that enables to create a number of layers and assign building materials and thicknesses to them um, dynamically. Or we can do this also from Grasshopper too. So this is a just like a quick view of of how the object is controlled in, in Grasshopper. Uh, we can just add parameters and and here you can see on the uh, on the left side how we are dynamically creating a number of layers for the composite and assigning uh, building materials for it. Then, uh, as we said, from the Grasshopper, not only from the Archicad interface, but from Grasshopper, we can control also a um, like with a color picker, but we can also bring um, other algorithms of color basically to define uh, each of these individual pieces for example, with random colors, with gradients of colors that respond to physical properties, etc. No? And also very powerful, we have uh, many ways to control the, the 2D definition. So basically, um, we, we will be able to assign properly pen sets and stuff that, that will help us to create proper documentation out of it. And here are just like a few examples of uh, what we have built with it, like a few um, basically a few a few project examples so you can see here we have uh, you know, a random combination of colors based on a, on, on a set of colors uh, also we're assigning several several different uh, thicknesses and then we are eliminating the the panel itself just keeping the structure on some of the pieces as well so so this is something that we did quickly in, in grasshopper just for that for, the, for showing here um, and basically uh, applied on, on projects uh, it's really useful because it actually can generate these panels based on any flat polygon that comes from Rhino so you can generate these panels uh, in Grasshopper parametrically or you can basically be based on uh, manually model panels in, in Rhino so so it's really really powerful um something really great uh, because actually the the curtain wall in, in Archicad can do most of this stuff but the way is uh the, the way the interface works in grasshopper it's a little bit complicated so in this case you can control the generation of surfaces basically from any any plugin or any way that you like and the only thing that the only input that you need is basically a planner surface so that's really really great and then we can control as i said like the colors you can see how them uh, some of these panels are glass like a courting wall some of these panels are solid with a fixed color and then we have a, another set of panels that are for example that had a gradient of color so all of these can be easily controlled from uh, from grasshopper and then uh, we can basically uh, parametrically adjust uh, other settings as well in this case for example the depth you can see the depth of the um of the of the frame it's basically adjusted parametrically creating this gradient of of depth as well based on a on, on an attractor point or something like that and then again we can control the uh the all these individual settings from from grasshopper these are also other examples that we've been doing. So normal curtain walls, bringing the color, the gradient colors into the panels, as we said, uh, or even eliminating completely the the, the panel 
uh, and keeping the, the substructure in order to create some kind of screen or false ceiling of some sort. And even creating some, um, some kind of pavilion, using them for doing floors, floor tiles, uh, etc. So in this case, you can see how we easily can create a set of colors in, in Grasshopper. And the greatest thing is that all these attributes, all these colors, they are not created in the Archicad file. They are basically created internally in the object. So this will not mess your project attributes, which was one of our requirements. Um, and this color obsession actually expanded to other objects as well. So, so uh, we had the panel object and the next thing that we needed or that we created is, is basically this kind of like structural profile based on a complex profile that can be used for uh, also to, to in, in like, uh, like, like as a beam or a, or a column or a fin or a facade uh, detail or something like this. And, but very importantly, we can have the same override colors uh, settings. So in this case, what we did is uh, we use it for, for this project that I was just showing on the screen where we have these terracotta, uh, these terracotta tubes that are forming part of the uh, of the facade as a screen, but actually the color of these uh, of these terracotta pipes uh, and the glazing type is changing from the bottom of the of the project in a more earthy tone into a more white and reflective tone at the top. So basically, uh, creating this gradient based on on the uh, location in the in height. Basically, we were able to very very quickly apply this into our uh, project. And um, also bringing this model view option controls that were that are extremely important because they they can actually help us to uh, to work in uh, prototyping and then later on in in design and detailing. So um, another set of objects that that we created that this is these are not controlled by Grasshopper but um, are. Well, I, I put this uh, QR code because we have a very detailed article on this object as well in, in our blog. But basically, uh, we had to, in a project that we were working on, we were assigned to uh, to do the signage as well. So the problem, as always, is basically the client doesn't have enough information at the time where you have to start. But also, they don't want to postpone or move the deadline. So you have to really uh, squeeze and, and uh, adjust your your working timeline into a, a ever shrinking deadline. So uh, what we decided to do is uh, basically create a number of, uh, a, of objects that will act as placeholders. So we knew we knew exactly the type of signage that we were going to use. So one hanging from the ceiling, one like poster like, another one that will be like door tags. So we had a, a set of, of different signage types and then we knew a lot of information about them. So what we did is we created this, uh, well, this is a data flow diagram uh, that, uh, that displays the process, but basically in the in the first so in number one we have these custom gdl objects that basically are two of them a, a 3d geometry object and a, and a label object that will label the 3d geometry object in a plan for a specific format then basically we brought that into archicad uh, and then on the side we created a database of information in earth table that contain all the different uh, number of um, of signages, and then we started tagging them by type, by subtype, uh, adding unique IDs, adding signage dimensions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we started completing this this database. And this database actually afterwards, um, uh, you, by using a, a some kind of workflow that we designed using CSV, and um, it basically fed information into the. Archicad GDL objects, and at the same time also feeding information into an Illustrator file that had a script that will automatically uh, basically create the, the images that should be attached to the Archicad files, or sorry, Archicad objects. Uh, you will see a little bit better. So basically Illustrator will automate based on the database, the images, and also Airtable, based on the CSV information, will input all the geometrical parameters that were needed to create the right geometry. So basically, this is an overview of the output. So we had room tags, we had uh, kind of like um, um, 
uh, wayfinding and wayfinding uh, uh, signages. We had some kind of screens with information, and then we had to also display all of these in the floor plan uh, based on a, a client requirement um, uh, standard of visualization. So we will have a color coding for the different types. We will have some kind of uh, small, uh, small um, elements that will display whether this, uh, this signage is needed electricity or or not, et cetera, et cetera. So all of this information was encoded in the element and we created a specific label that will fulfill the client's requirement to display all that information. So as I said, we had our Airtable based and uh, uh, basically exporting a CSV. This CSV will be read by the um, the object, the Archicad 3D object, the signage object in 3D, and automatically that one object will generate all the different types of uh, 3D um, signages, and that will also read the texture generated from Illustrator. So all of this will be uh, completely synchronized based on a, a unique ID for each of the each of the signages that will also uh, be included in the naming of the texture. So so everything was uh, basically coordinated based on, based on that unique ID. And then, as we said, uh, in the in the right side, you can see how this other object, the label object, will get all this information needed to display in the floor plan. So these are just like a few um, uh, zooms from, from the object interface, uh, super simple. And basically, uh, we will just need to um, uh, link to the right CSV file and and basically based on the on the ID, so the object had to have uh, uh, ID uh, well for selected from a from a selection set. You had to select the subtype and the unique ID, and that will bring all the other information from the CSV file. Moving on, we have this. Uh, we have created a, a number of label objects after this this project that uh, we realized that were very very powerful. The first object that that actually is changed the way we we work now is this uh, label object that we call keynote label uh, that it's basically able to read into properties uh, ids uh, that are into the composites and complex profiles so uh, basically the standard label from archicad um, when you use especially complex profiles and, and composites it's only able to read properties from the object level or object yeah like an object level and uh, we, this will include the name of the composite or will include the name of a complex profile but it won't be able to go into the building materials that are composing this uh these both complex profiles and, and composite so so we created this label with the help of of greg again that will be able to basically reach inside the, these building materials and being able to basically you can see on the on the uh, left side it's a yeah, model view option that we call a working mode which basically displays a little interface that you can choose from so basically you have to click on the object and and basically you will need to select which of the uh, building materials you want to um, you want to display uh some property so it could be the building material id it could be um, the name of the building material it could be a number of different things so you can see uh, in the in the right side we have one complex profile wall with with several different materials where we are basically um using the same label displaying all these different materials with different settings of the uh of the um uh, of the label we also including a, a little tool for trimming the text so based on a separator that can be uh, uh, like a dash or or any other separator that you want uh, basically it's able to pick from uh, the properties or from the building material or the surface name it, it's able to pick one part for example the initial code if you have a surface that it's called i don't know sf01 and then dash a white paint and then by selecting the dash as a separator you will be able to choose either the code in front of the name or the name which is also very powerful then you have uh, like a little video here that that show you how it works basically we place the the label go into the settings the settings are quite uh quite simple and then we go to the edit mode 
uh, and then basically by changing the location of this uh, of this uh, hotspot, it will you can see how the name of the building material or the code of the building material actually is applied. So now we're just uh, putting them in the right position and choosing the different building materials that compose that specific composite and. And yeah, basically that's that's it. I think we have, a, yeah, one more to do. Uh, so you still need to go and, and select which one, uh, which one we want to display. But that's fine. And then you can change between, uh, you know, the name or the the name of the building material, the description. Uh, that one is actually the name of the of the composite. So. Um, and then this label has one more uh, one more uh, capability, which is basically uh, it's able as well to to connect with this same CSV uh, file, this type of connection that we developed for the other project that will basically um, cross reference the, for example, the building material ID with some kind of identificator in the in the database and we'll be able to bring uh, other data fields that are in this database as long description, short description, price, uh, I don't know, any type of data that you have externally, it can be uh, included in uh, in the label description. And obviously, if the database changes, is updated, then you just need to uh, basically re-export the CSV file and then automatically, uh, once it's into the Archicad file, it will be uh, updated in all the labels. So, so it's quite... Um, it's not fully automatic, but it's it's really really powerful. So basically, as as you can see, we can uh, we have added some kind of uh, links into the uh, in the interface as well. So we're able to go quickly into the database that it's uh, in the cloud, and then download the the CSV file and reload it into Archicad. So so basically, it's uh, it's a similar process as before, but you can use it for this keynote label that we have. And then, uh, well, in collaboration, we do a lot of our work in collaboration with other people. So in this case, Andy Thompson, it's a good friend and we have worked together in many projects. And he basically came up with uh, this idea of creating a label that, um, that could be, uh, that could display basically the, the properties of uh, different composites for, for works. So I'm, I'm uh, taking these slides from a presentation that he did recently. And basically this label, it's able to, to provide uh, these graphics uh, based on the composite uh, property. So in this case, if I go to the next slide, um, we are able to uh, to display the global warming potential, okay, the energy impact graph, and the thermal resistance and conductance graph as well. So, so basically, this is the same label, but basically using different parameters. And uh, this it's really useful because it can re it can give you uh, well not only the uh, the impact of each of the building materials in a in a chosen composite or build up for your building so it will basically let the designers uh, be able to um to, to be more aware of you know what is the different impact uh, and well carbon or or thermal or energy uh, basically on the the different solutions that they that they uh, check so basically that it's a really a simple interface uh, we can set up some kind of color ranges from top to i mean from high to low uh, and for, for basically customizing the look of the, of the label then a couple of of graphics uh, the contour, contour pens and values and so on and then we're able to also display different properties as we said the global warming potential composite uh, and component resistance thermal transmittance or embodied carbon as well so basically simple quick video that is showing the, the interface how we attach to the um to the composite there we simply change the we, we change the the property set that it's being displayed and and that's it we can have more than one obviously we can just move it up off to the side we we need to as uh, sandy had in in his diagram um so we have more gdl objects that that we are developing but none of them is uh, uh in i think in a in, in a production state or or there are interesting enough but, but we have also been developing uh, a number of archicad add-ons uh, together with also with partners so first of all i i want to 
thank uh, Dushan Basson, who's basically uh, the person behind uh, Onisu. So they do a lot of parametric objects and, and add-ons for, for ARCHICAD and for BMX. And we, I think for the last year or so, we've been working on, on a couple of add-ons. So in this case, is, this add-on is a, a customization of, uh, well, uh, of a quantity takeoff tool that we are uh, we're uh, testing now and it's basically it has some kind of selection settings and criteria based on on archicad classifications and they has a, a number of inputs so the interesting thing is that once we start we set up the criteria uh we can uh i mean we will have in the same uh, in the same screen, basically not the difference with Archicad schedules, but in schedules, you have to go to the other screen. They're really not linked in, in, in real, real time. You cannot see the 3D and the schedules at the same time. Whereas here, you can actually see what is the, uh, you can click on selections. They will bring you to the selected elements and, and it will bring you directly to the, um, uh, to the actual quantities that are set, uh, we would be able to to do some uh, some small audits as well in in terms of layers and and type and 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 so on. We are because it is based on classification and in not not in object types. We actually can mix up a, a few of the of these elements in a single schedule as well. So we're seeing here how we how we basically um, do these kind of selections and and see how it uh, how it works. Uh, in this second video, what we're doing basically. Um, this is a, a project we are developing now in Spain. So the idea is that we can export to Excel and to the cloud. So we have a cloud tool, and but also an Excel simple tool that can uh, create well, simple Excel files, uh, basically that uh, we can integrate later on in, in, in a bigger uh, quantity takeoff report. So in this case, this is basically the, the, the BIM ID, which is the, the grouping criteria. Um, in this case, we were uh, using the the name of the surface and basically given the, the, the quantities that were selected. There is um, basically a number of different uh, of different export types that we can choose between areas or based on, on surfaces on building materials on elements and so on and there is one one thing quite interesting is that we can set standards for the different types so walls for example will display uh, areas wall will display areas we, we can set up kind of like associated quantity types but the interesting thing here is that we can create exceptions as well based on um on on um classification so we can have a, a model that it's that it's made out with walls but uh, if it's classified as a skirting, in this case, we can basically measure it in a different uh, different way. So we can measure it, for example, in, in linear meters. So we can have a schedule, in this case, that combines also different uh, quantity types. So some of them will be measured in walls, sorry, in area. Some of the, some of the walls will be measured in, uh, in length as well. So in this case, you know, we can, we can see the total of the elements, but also individually go into the, um, into the elements and, and select and, and check which one are are the ones that are uh, in this case we can see the whole list of skirting that it's in the file uh, because we did a selection based on a selected object as well so it's quite interesting it can um uh, it can really i think speed up some of the work that that we do when we are checking and auditing a, a file and especially when we are uh, when the, the the output it's supposed to be a um, some kind of quantity takeoff and, and and schedules. This doesn't really take off the uh, from from the scheduling in Archicad. I think the schedules in Archicad can be also used and can be also set uh, for different different things. But but I think this is a, a great tool to to use in combination with with the schedules too. So lastly, we we developed this uh, platform in the cloud where we can basically, in this case, uh, we're selecting a, for example the the that finish the surfaces for finishes. So we're just doing a quick, a quick selection and for, uh, for finishes. And uh, in here you can see all the different elements and, and quantities and so on. And instead of exporting to Excel, uh, we're gonna go into our uh, the, the platform that that is being designed. So we need to authenticate, of course, to get into our uh, logging. And we can see our projects. We can see our quantity sets. And now once we export. Uh, and it's really fast. 
we can basically go and check online. So the use of this is basically what we discussed earlier in the in the project. So earlier in the presentation, it's basically being able to give access to uh, other people uh, in the um, in the project team that is not necessarily in Archicad. So basically being able to have these schedules of quantities outside the Archicad file that you know other members, for example, our project manager or the, the person that is, uh, I don't know, in charge of quantities and so on or specifications, uh, they can have access uh, basically to the latest information without having to, uh, to open up the file in Archicad. We have done with Tushan as well some uh, smaller tools as well, like this selection tool uh, that is basically a, a very quick filtering tool that you can select an element. It will give you certain uh, well, certain properties, and then you can filter based on you know uh, the same classification, the same ID, the same uh, layer, or the same uh, renovation filter. So you can very quickly also uh, check this um, these selections. No. Uh, it's a, as I said, it's an object that that uh, we've been using for for speeding up certain processes. And then, uh, in collaboration with uh, Graphics of Singapore, we developed this small add-on. I mean, I don't have a video for it, but basically, we realized that one of the biggest problems that we had as a company is that every time we incorporated new people and and new um, new colleagues that were not so familiar with Archica at the first place, uh, we would find a lot of small modeling errors in the uh, you know in our models so that will really uh, slow down the process and and make difficult for for everybody that was working in the in the project but the the thing is that people will sometimes not be able to identify quickly those mistakes so we wanted to or we set out with to, to create this kind of like auditing tool almost like for yourself that we could use uh, every every day or every week basically to to audit our the models and there are a lot of interesting tools i think already out of the box in archica but 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 there are certain things that you cannot really check uh, with for example um, schedules or uh, or graphic overrides uh, so we developed this this small tool so basically the the checker uh, checks on wall angles wall length and object angles and uh, door and window widths uh, uh, or, or sizes. So basically the wall angle checker was one of the things that we really needed to to, to do. So basically you can set up a uh, like an increment, uh, what we call modular angle. So anything that uh, anything that is multiple of this angle will not be considered a mistake, but anything that is smaller than this this increment, for example, uh, uh, in this in this particular example, a four degree uh, angle will not be accepted. So it will it will actually send you a um, or or, or will, will be listed as a um, as a mistake. Uh, you can uh, obviously, if your project is rotated uh, by you know your 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 site is rotated at a very old angle, you can set up that angle as a reference angle, and then basically all the angles will adapt uh, to this. Uh, base angle, so to speak. And then the very interesting thing is that we can select all these uh, mistakes or some of these mistakes. So you double click, it will bring you to the, the camera and the selection to the object. And if we if we um, understand that this is a mistake, then we can create automatically issues. So you can basically select a number of, of these uh, mistakes that have been, um, have been uh, displayed and then automatically create issues. Uh, that will obviously um, uh, linked with the you know rest of the issues of of the file. So I think I, I found this a really really useful tool that we want to continue developing maybe with other other ideas that should help also other companies that that have the same same problem that we have. So thank you so much. Uh, I know it was a lot of information. I hope it was useful and and inspiring. And well, we're here to basically uh, help you out if you if you ever uh, if you ever need. So if you have any kind of idea or or a problem, we can basically come up together with uh, probably a customized solution. I think that's the idea. No, never uh, the idea is that we never have to settle with whatever we have, but, but there are ways actually to improve uh, the software for our own needs and for our own issues that that we may have. Thank you so much, and and Nathan, back to you. Uh, I'm I'm here if uh, um, anyone has any question, happy to to respond.